Welcome to part four of my series all about e-bikes. Today we'll be covering what you need to know about the different gearing and drive systems that are found on electric bikes. We're starting right after this. Most electric bikes have a gearing system to allow the rider to adjust the pedaling cadence with the speed of the bike and the incline of the road or the strength of the wind. So like regular pedal bicycles, electric bikes can have anywhere from 1 to 27 gears. On the pedal crankset there is either a single sprocket called a chain ring or a derailleur with two or three sprockets. Like regular bicycles, most e-bikes have a derailleur at the back wheel, which moves the chain up and down the cluster of its sprockets called the cassette or freewheel. This allows the rider to select the best ratio of gears to suit the riding conditions so that their pedaling cadence is comfortable and efficient. With mid-drive motors, there are often as many as 11 sprockets on the rear wheel hub, because the lower gears, the larger sprockets, give the motor more torque for hauling heavy loads and climbing steep hills, and the higher gears, the smaller sprockets, allow the motor to run at a slower and more optimal speed when the bike is going fast. With hub motors, seven gears are usually sufficient because the motor always turns at the same speed as the wheel, regardless of which gear is selected. A big drawback with the cassette and derailleur assembly for a mid-drive e-bike is that it's more prone to wear and to failure than a regular bike because of the stress provided by the combined power of the motor and the cyclists. Notwithstanding that a mid-drive motor requires very frequent changing of gears, adding more wear and tear. This is not so with a hub motor, because the hub motor applies power directly to the wheel. Only the cyclist's power is applied to the chain and gears, and the hub motor doesn't require frequent changes of gears. Since the hub motor is going to do much of the work, the drivetrain should last longer than that of the mid-drive system, and even longer than that of a non-electric bike. Often, a fall will not only bend the derailleur, but also the part of the frame that the derailleur is attached to. When this happens, the only remedy is to take the bike to a qualified mechanic to have the frame straightened. Of course, these problems can happen with a regular bike, but because an electric bike is heavier than a non-electric one, impacts on the derailleur are more severe. Some e-bikes, like the RAD, come with a derailleur guard like the one in this picture. If the bike you're considering buying doesn't come with one, you can buy an aftermarket guard that attaches to the axle for $10 to $15 from your bicycle store. If you have an electric bike with a front wheel motor or a mid-drive motor, your rear wheel hub is free, so you could opt for an internally geared hub. With this kind of gearing system, the gears are cleverly hidden inside the rear wheel hub, protected from water and dirt. They don't get dirty and greasy like a cassette, they don't go out of adjustment, and they require almost no maintenance except for an annual oil change, and they can last tens of thousands of kilometers. These are easier to use than a derailleur and shifter, since you can change gears rapidly whether the pedals are turning or not, and even when the bike is stopped. Depending on the make and the model, they can have from 5 to 14 gears, giving a wide range of cadence options. The most popular of these hubs are New Vinci, Roloff, Shimano, SRAM, Enviolo, and Sturme Archer. There is a different technology, the long-awaited automatic bicycle transmission by Enviolo. The stepless automatic technology takes the ride experience to the next level with its set it and forget it approach. You only need to set up your preferred cadence and the stepless automatic technology will adjust the Enviolo system so you can always pedal at the same pace even up or down hills. Also, this system doesn't require any oil changes. 
A disadvantage for the purist who wants the lightest e-bike possible is that internally geared hubs are on average twice as heavy as the cassette and derailleur. Internally geared hubs are pricey, but they are sometimes found on mid-range priced e-bikes. Now that you're completely overwhelmed with information overload, let me throw another fantastic technology at you. What I'm driving at is another kind of internally geared system for e-bikes. It's an enclosed gearbox in the bicycle's pedal crankset. The company that makes it is called Pinion in Germany. Like the internally geared hub, the crankset transmission can have as many as 18 gears and is also user-friendly. The iteration that we see here uses a hub motor, with the advantage that only the force of the rider is applied to the carbon belt, thus providing very little wear. Of all the systems that I've seen so far, this is probably the most reliable combination that you can find. And there's more. If what you're looking for is the best hill climbing e-bike, maybe what you would want is an even more amazing system. Pinion makes e-bikes with a crankset that contains not only the transmission, but also a motor, all in one package. In 2022, Vapor Propulsion Laboratories took on the distribution of Pinion products in North America, so maybe you can expect to see them in your American or Canadian bike store soon. For those who don't have that much money and prefer the simplicity of not having to constantly change gears, is the single-speed e-bike, which is much less expensive than a geared hub system. This requires a hub motor because mid-drive motors don't work without a choice of gears on the rear wheel. A single-speed e-bike can work with either a front or a rear motor. On these bikes, there is only one sprocket on the rear wheel and a chain ring on the pedal crankset. If you're interested in this option, you might want to watch my video, I Hate Changing Gears, linked in the description. This leads me to the next subject, drive systems. What connects the pedals to the rear wheel? But before I forget, I'd just like to ask you to help my channel by giving this video a like, by writing a comment, by sharing with others, or by subscribing. The most commonly used system for transferring the rotating motion of the pedals to the wheel, on the vast majority of bicycles, electric or not, is a simple chain. The advantages are that the chain system is inexpensive, lightweight, and very efficient, in that it doesn't cause a lot of energy-robbing friction. It is so efficient that less than 5% of the cyclist or the motor's energy is lost through friction. The disadvantage is that the chain and derailleur have to be adjusted occasionally. Most annoyingly is that to clean the drive system correctly takes a lot of time and effort. If you fail to clean and oil the chain and gears frequently, they wear out fast. There's another drive system that you will rarely see in bicycle stores, but that you want to consider if you have the money and the desire for a low-maintenance bike. What I'm talking about here is the carbon belt drive. Instead of a chain made of metal links, a carbon belt is one single piece without any split along its entire length. The advantages of the belt is that it is lighter than a chain, it's silent, requires no oiling, and needs only a light brushing with a toothbrush once in a while, and doesn't get clogged up with mud like a chain would. It's more expensive at the time of purchase, but it will last much longer, as much as 30,000 kilometers. One disadvantage is that it can't be installed on just any bike. This may sound a little complicated if you're new to electric bikes, so I'll just mention that since the belt is made of one piece and can't be split like a chain, you need a belt tensioner and a special frame that opens up to allow the belt to pass through. It's not possible to use a belt with a derailleur. Therefore, with a belt drive, the gearing system must be with an internally geared hub. There is an exception to this, the single-speed electric bike, which we talked about earlier. If the combination of internally geared hub and belt drive interests you, there are several makes on the market, although you may not find one in your favorite bicycle shop.
If you don't need a throttle, you might consider either the very expensive Reeson Muller or a more reasonably priced Gazelle Ultimate C380. But if you need lots of range and you don't need a step-through frame, and if you can afford it, an exceptional compromise would be the Evolo Atlas. It has the Enviolo geared hub, a Gates carbon belt, the powerful Bafang M600 mid-drive motor, an optional throttle, an optional rack-mounted second battery, and several useful accessories. The hitch, though, is that it's only available online, so one day, when something goes wrong with the electrical system, you won't have the support of a local mechanic who knows the bike. To raise your awareness about this important subject, I published a video entitled The Big Big Problem with Electric Bikes, linked in the description. While we're on the subject of drive systems, there are electric bicycles that transmit the motion of the pedals to the rear wheel via a drive shaft like cars used to do. I've never seen them in stores, having discovered them only online. The shaft drive bikes that I found tend to be very creative, with exotic designs intended to turn heads. The few I've come across tend to have low power and low range, and are made for short rides of about 20 kilometers. This one is the Bayer Volta. Here we have the Egogumi. And the Han bike. Finally, and this is the last item to cover in this session, I'll just touch upon a drive system that uses no chain, no belt, and no shaft. This is the drive system that makes it possible to charge the battery by pedaling. I'm referring to the ride-by-wire electric bike drivetrain, also known as digital drive. There's no direct connection between the pedals and the motor like with the other drive systems we've covered. Turning the pedals spins a generator in the pedal crankset that sends electrical power to the battery and then the electric energy from the battery is transferred to the motor. One company that does this is Schaefer Heinzmann in Europe. The main criticism of this system is based on the poor efficiency. The company claims that only 5% of the cyclist's effort is lost in the conversion of the pedaling energy into electricity and back into kinetic energy in the motor. I suspect that it's more than that. Whatever it is, since the battery can be charged by plugging it in like a regular e-bike, this loss of efficiency doesn't really matter. There is another disadvantage that comes to mind that, that would be serious if you live in an area of steep hills. With the chain or belt, when you're going up a hill, you're helping the motor when you pedal because your pedaling effort is going directly into the drive system. But with a ride-by-wire system, your pedaling effort doesn't add to the motor's effort because it's all going into charging the battery. Finally, the motor is only 250 watts. Without the direct help from the cyclist, it wouldn't be powerful enough to negotiate a big hill. But don't hold your breath until you find one in your local bicycle store. That concludes part 4 of this series. Join me again in part 5, which will be about wheels and tires. We'll talk about how the wheels and tires influence the kind of electric bike that is right for your needs, and we'll talk about what e-bike manufacturers are doing or not doing to protect your future electric bike against the bane of the cyclist, a flat tire. Thank you for watching, and remember, never quit cycling!